passing through Paris quickly, here is a continuation of my first video on datations that has made more than 50,000 views in three days, even if I made it super fast. After my first video about datation in Egypt, I received thousands of emails, messages, comments in three days. So I wanted to thank you so much for all your reactions and I advise those who did not see this first video to go to see it now before this one. I remind you some facts. On the evening of February 22, I was watching Egyptian TV in Cairo. Suddenly, I saw a very, very interesting interview of the director of the uh, Department of Prehistory in the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities, Dr. Khaled Saad. What he officially said in several channels of the Egyptian TV and then pick it up by the newspapers was so important, seemed to me so important about the dating of the Egyptian civilization that I was eager to listen to each interview available on every medias about him and to translate it into English and French as I do in all my work from years and the most important to summarize it all and to give the best to the general public that deserves to be truly informed in time. After posting this video the next day I got strong reactions of the most varied kinds, from amazement to relief and joy, from a good understanding of the context to all-out attacks, from insults to praise. And I was only retransmitting the word of an official who represents his country in international congresses. But you know, they always shoot the messenger. But it's rather very, very good news. But so disturbing for others. Here are some of the attacks and my answers for your pleasure i hope and then you will get informations and documents about dr Khaled Saad that you never saw before it was first affirmed that dr Saad did not exist while his title function and many links of his TV interviews are under my first video. Then it was said that my translation of his interview was wrong, that uh, it was wrong the numbers of the dictation I gave in translation. But for 20 years I am in Egypt. I speak Arabic perfectly. Um, that is to prove that I speak perfectly Arabic. And also I have a lot of university diplomas in languages. And doing so, my intellectual 
honesty, my sincerity, my 20 years stay in Egypt, my seriousness in my writings uh, were in Europe. And, uh, but it was especially by people who never read something about me, by me. Uh, ne they don't know me, absolutely don't know anything about me. Or attacks were coming from uh, people with very suspicious reasons. And I will not comment on these reasons, but you can imagine. Then some people say that it's impossible to date precisely uh, stones and uh, sites uh, because C C14, carbon 14, uh, is not able to date the uh, stone, etc. But I think you have to refresh your knowledge about the methods used in archaeology because now there are plenty of fantastic uh, uh, methods and tools to measure to date sites and artifacts. There is, uh, for example, the uranium thorium method which is fantastic the uranium 234 and the thorium 230 uh, from the decay of uranium 238 that is able to that is giving us a lot a lot of information uh, there are the paleomagnetic uh, methods uh, you you can measure levels um, very very interesting methods the paleomagnetic one um, with uh, each levels from TD1 to TD6 etc you have plenty of scanners scanners very very sophisticated ones infrared scanners uh, you have high resolution digital scanners very sophisticated you can reproduce uh, color uh, shape uh, tex texture uh, that you you are not able to see with your eyes and for the dating of the stern you have the crystallography uh, the xrd method and xrf that are fantastic to uh, give the date of stones. So we are in a period with a lot of technology that allow us to know much more precisely and much more back in time because we are able to go back much more than one million years with precision. So back in time so it's a fantastic period and that's why uh, countries like Spain are redating their uh, prehistoric sites they redate the uh, Altamira uh, grotto cave um, and they discover a very big difference in in the date they found today uh, than in the dating of the past so uh, other countries are doing exactly the same that Egypt they are redating their sites and um, they start with the prehistoric sites because uh, the, the, the technology allow that now, a little reminder. What did Dr. Khaled Saad say in his last interview on Egyptian TV that made so much noise? In summary, that a site would have been discovered with 86 homes and tombs in South Sina that officially dates the Egyptian civilization to at least 15,000 years and not to 7,000 years as it is officially recognized everywhere. 
that reditation of prehistoric sites is ongoing in Egypt, 306 sites in Egypt, and that they have already begun to find for some sites large differences in the results with dating by foreigners and often done a long time ago. They find dates ranging from 50,000 to 500,000 years and sometimes even with, he says, traces of civilization. So first, I started thinking about directly contacting Dr. Saad after my first video. It was not easy because I learned that he was returning from a two-month stay in the desert on the border of Egypt with Sudan, the type of landscape that you see there, and that I have already traveled in difficult conditions where the prehistoric sites on which they work are located. Moreover, as soon as he arrived in Cairo, he went to the Delta for three days in a wedding where he was invited and I could not see myself contacting, disturbing him so quickly. And at the same time, I had to go to France for a few days. So first, I was looking for friends in Egypt who might know him personally and I was surprised to find that two of my dear Egyptian friends knew him very well. A few years ago, I had visited and briefed EGSMA engineers in the Fayum office for a full day, invited by Dr. Ali Barakat. The EGSMA is the official authority for the geological and mining studies of Egypt, and it is them who published in 2005 with UNESCO and UNDP the official project of prehistoric human cultures in Egypt that you see here. Dr. Barakat already knew Dr. Saad who was already working on his sites. Then, talking with another friend, Dr. Azam Ahmed, who manages the archaeological area of Abu Sir, he said he knows him very well and proposes to be my intermediary with him. He called Dr. Saad for me during the wedding and then went for me to the office of the Ministry of Antiquities in Zamalek in Cairo. I was in airport leaving for Paris and he tells Dr. Saad the whole story of my video. Dr. Saad complied kindly with my requests and decided to have this picture made of him to communicate it to you from his office at the ministry and another photo with my friend Dr. Ahmed so that I could show you the veracity of its existence and its position. Then I am told his private phone and he told me to go to see him at the ministry when I want, when he will be there and offers me access even uh, within a few months to the grounds of his research by inviting me there, saying that in view of my long-term friendships in Egypt and my knowledge, I am welcome. Then he sent to me photos, documents, and even PowerPoints full of conferences, including cooperative and prehistory uh, Egyptian Mesopotamian one. I have not finished looking at everything. I myself have a lot of work, my own research. Before showing you some of these documents, I remind you who are worried about dating that these are not questioning the classic names of culture, such as such as Mosterian, Chalcolithic, Neolithic, Epinolithic, etc. What is at stake here is the older datation of Egyptian civilization. By civilization, we mean what archaeology defines as such, a set of phenomena of a complex society with principles, uh, aesthetic, technical, scientific, religious, moral, because that is what would have discovered Dr. Saad in Sinai and that would make him, according to him, date the Egyptian civilization to 5,000 years instead of 7,000. And for some prehistoric sites much older, from 150,000 to 500,000 years, he speaks to us of traces of civilizations. It is to say, for the moment, 
one or several conditions fulfilled for a possible civilization, but not yet all the criteria because they are discovering, analyzing, redating, referencing many elements. The Egyptians are not the only ones to relate their prehistoric sites. The Spanish, among others, do so and find big differences also in their new datings for the Altamira caves, for example, as shown in the excellent article of the French magazine Science and Avenir, February 2018. That said, here is an article from a dozen pages that National Geographic devoted in uh, 2014 to Dr. Saad's research in Egyptian prehistoric sites. There are currently 306 prehistoric sites in Egypt. There are caves with paintings in El Cantara, Kurta, Tava, Jara, in Jara, where we discover even larger paintings in quantities and in Lascaux, uh, the caves in France. They are discovering non-stop other caves. And at the border with Sudan and Libya, at Gilfil Kibir, the famous saints in the caverns, Wadi El Senour, uh, the cave of the swimmers, fishermen and hunters in the desert, far from everything, of which you may have seen some extraordinary images in the film of the English patient, and it is in this arid zone, in Gebel Wynat, the mountain of the sources without roads, where Dr. Saad was during these last three months. Because not only they read it, but they find many other caves and paintings and other things to analyze. I confess that this place of Gebel Wynat fascinates me because there are Apparently was discovered very recently representations of some Netshero who should not be there in the distant time. This caves dating from 60,000 years. Dr. Sat spent his time in the field of these 306 sites for years. It is a man of ground who manages relent relentlessly his teams in the most arid, difficult and dangerous zones, going from a site to another sometimes separated from 900 kilometers. This is not the top official entrenched in an office as he could do, but a field researcher, enthusiast and who makes it all the year long. So let's go to Sinai, where there are Nawamis, these kinds of dry stone round huts, not exceeding 2 meters high and 3 to 6 meters in diameter, with small openings and which have been dated from the Circa Copper Age, Calcolithic, 4000 before Christ, which were considered more like tombs than anything else and that you can find also in the Sultanate of Oman, Jordan and Yemen. From 2015 and January 2016 in a report of the National Geographic about Dr. Saad's work in Sina near Chaba in the mountain with photos you see here and his name circled in red tells us about 37 very big Nawamis, I quote, with spruce of housing. There are doors, this time of different sizes, much of the size of a man standing and above all being able to close the door from the inside. Construction technique to shelter from the rain and marble squares swinging on the roof to get in more or less sun in it. The evidence of prehistoric inhabitants are about 30 people and there are also tombs of three people. You can see here the personal photos of Dr. Saad that he transmitted to me for you. You can appreciate the eight of the walls. Since then, and we are in 2018. He speaks of 86 dwellings of more people. The dates are met thanks to the paintings, artifacts and skeletons found. There is still a lot of work. The conditions are difficult. There is a war barely farther north against terrorism in Sinai. But a scientific publication is planned this year and others, of course. 
all this work of discoveries, redating, analysis, expertise, referencing, takes years, but we are on the eve of fabulous discoveries. I will not fail to inform you in the near future. I will probably have the opportunity in a few months to go on the ground when the danger will be less to see the teams at work thanks to the proposal of Dr. Sad. In the meantime, I continue my own research and to inform you. Thank you. This was Jigal.